Hello everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial where in this one I'm going to be showing you how to make a very simple audio visualizer using geometry nodes, uh, which is special because I don't think I've seen anybody take audio data and import it into geometry nodes and do anything with it. Um, anyways, uh, you're seeing it work right now, probably to the sound of my voice, not the music since I feel like that's more like boom, boom boom, distinctive. Um, I'm going to show you how to make this, um, but first, uh, let me thank the sponsor for this video. This tutorial is brought to you by NordVPN, which is not only a great service, but is also a great opportunity uh, for us to put the audio visualizer in the corner. So I'm just going to be demoing what the thing that we're going to be making is a bit more, but onto NordVPN. There's only two kinds of people. The first kind of person does not know that their data is susceptible uh, to pretty much anybody who wants to access it every time you use Wi-Fi in a coffee shop, an airport, anything like this. You're putting your at risk if you are not using NordVPN. And the second kind of person is the kind of person that is aware that these risks exist, and that kind of person as well uh, should be using NordVPN. And NordVPN isn't only basically a tool that protects your privacy online, it definitely does do that, uh, but it also has a bunch of other stuff that it lets you do. So for example, if there's region blocking in whatever region you're in, maybe Netflix doesn't have a certain show in Canada, or I, I don't know what it is. If you have region blocking on any website, uh, VPNs also help you take care of that so you can access things that otherwise you wouldn't really be able to access. You can use this kind of thing on your laptop, on your computer, on your phone, on your whatever. In fact, you can use up to six devices at a time per account. So if you get an account, I think you should be covered unless you're the kind of freak out there who has like three phones in one pocket and you know, whatever. So stop living this life where you can't go to cafes, you know, without living in fear and you can't get around region blocking and all this. Uh, try out NordVPN because they have a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you do not like it, you get your money back. So, you know, why, why, why not try it? But here, I'm here to make the deal a bit sweeter. Go, go to my link in the description. Use my promo code. Use these things to get yourself NordVPN at a discount. Uh, go, go to the cafes, do, what it, do whatever it is that you were already doing, but just more safely and more conveniently. Link in the description. Okay, and we are back. Let me tell you how to make this thing. So, uh, first of all, I just want to mention, if you've never touched geometry nodes, this one might be a tiny bit complicated as an intro tutorial, but whatever, it should be followable. Um, I'm going to be using Blender version 3.0 alpha. You can use 2.93, you can use whatever. Um, let's just get started. Uh, the first thing we do is because this is a geometry nodes project is we go to the geometry nodes workspace and you know, uh, you can proceed as usual. You make a node tree, you delete the input, and then we can add in a bunch of nodes. Uh, the only issue here uh, for the audio visualizer is geometry nodes as it stands does not have any audio nodes at all, right? <laughs> uh, so we need to find some kind of third party or like multi-step way to import an audio information and then we can do stuff with it. Uh, the simplest thing I found is what we are going to do is we're just going to have like an empty uh, or it doesn't really matter what object it is. We just need to make a placeholder object that is going to store our audio information. So uh, the way we now import in this audio and you're like, okay, how do we import this in here, uh, let alone in geometry notes? You want to open up the graph editor. Uh, it does not work if you do not open up the graph editor. I'm going to add in a keyframe, which you can now see adds in data here. So before we didn't have anything to work with, now we've added a keyframe. I'm just gonna get rid of the X and Y location. So in other words, Z location, it's in the graph editor, then go to key, bake sounds to F curve, and then you can just pick whatever MP3 file you want. So it can be a narration, it can be music, it could be whatever. So I'm just gonna pick my intro music. Um, all these settings here are fine for what we're doing. And you can see uh, now this empty is now bumping to music that doesn't really exist. You just have to imagine it in your head. Uh, but long story short, it's looking at the volume or like the peak decibel thing of the, of the song. And it's pasting that into the Z location of the empty. In other words, um, now in geometry nodes, if we can import in this Z location, which we totally can, uh, then we've achieved our goal. So let's uh, first make a very basic scene. So I'm just going to uh, start off by making a grid. So we're gonna build up to the final result uh, that I showed you. I'm gonna make a grid. I'm gonna make it a bigger grid, just so we can see what's going on. Let's make this graph editor smaller. And uh, if we go to wireframe mode where you can actually see the geometry, I'm gonna increase the vertex count. And the way uh, you want to think about this is for every vertex on this uh, plane, I'm going to be pasting one of those cylinders. So high resolution is better for this. Okay. So we have a grid of points. I'm going to paste cylinders and then let's make them bump uh, to this music because since that's the point. Um, to make the, the cylinders, we need to do a point instance. In other words, we need to instance or copy a geometry onto every single vertex. Which geometry? We haven't made it yet. So let's just make a nice cylinder, bring it off to the side, and then in this geometry, we pick the cylinder. Beautiful. 
Um, only issue is cylinder's too big, and that's an easy fix. You just scale it on everything. I guess you could scale it on every axis, and then we can scale it up on Z afterwards. So I'm just scaling it until they're no longer overlapping. Might take a couple scaling operations if I don't know the exact number. Okay, scaling, 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 one more, boop. Okay, beautiful. Uh, now we have a, a grid of cylinders that uh, you know are there. I'm just gonna scale it up on the Z axis by like three to make them taller. Okay, cool. Uh, we have a grid of uh, cylinders. How do I move them up and down randomly? Well, uh, first of all, what we need to do is we need to add in a point translate node. Point translate doesn't move these uh, cylinders. It just moves the points of the grid and then the cylinders are being copied there. So you can see it moves the whole mesh in whichever vector we choose. Um, but of course, uh, we would want to choose a vector here that's different for every single cylinder so it looks random. So here's how we do it. Here's how we do it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in an attribute randomize. This is going to randomize. It's going to give us a random uh, number or vector or whatever we choose uh, for each of these. I'm going to go with a random, uh, let's go with a random number. We're going to call this height. Um, so now the way you want, you want to think about this is every point, every cylinder uh, has a random number, as you can see in this column of heights. And if we were to now, this isn't going to work, by the way, but if we take this and plug it in here, uh, you can see it randomizes everything, um, <laughs> but also on the X and Y axes. So I need to somehow suppress that. Uh, quick solution, I'm going to do a combine attribute. So I'm going to make a vector attribute that has an X, Y, Z component um, such that X and Y are zero and Z is the height. And we can just paste that right back in. Uh, what this means is now um, all this randomness is going up and down, no matter uh, what we uh, do to this. Um, because height was a, a one-dimensional thing, I'm like, make it a vector, but suppress X and Y. So it's only going up and down on the Z axis, okay? And then we're just overriding it. Um, beautiful. So now that we have this set up, uh, we can try to incorporate this empty uh, music bumper. And what I'm thinking is we're going to have the amplitude or the strength of this randomization uh, be tied to this. So that's uh, super simple. First of all, how do we import in this data? I'm just going to go to object info because remember now this uh, audio information is stored in the Z channel of this, uh, which makes it very convenient because you just look at this empty. So now we've imported it, and this location vector, which has the Z channel, now tells us uh, the thing. Um, okay, so how do we make it uh, work? Uh, I guess there's a couple ways. Maybe the fastest is I'm going to do an attribute vector math. So I'm going to do some math on this height attribute that is now a vector with 0, 0, and then the Z channel is random. Um, so it's a vector, and I'm just going to multiply it by something. So let's do the height and just write it back into this. And I'm going to multiply it by what? by this special location vector. Um, and you can see, uh, now this thing is bumping. Uh, what makes this uh, look interesting is the randomize randomization, which we can change the seed of to get different like audio visualizers. Or what could be interesting is you could like animate the seed to be like changing every couple frames, um, which I guess I didn't do in my original, but let's do it. So hash frame gives us the frame number. So I'm on frame one, two, three, four, five. It just, you know, takes that information. I'm going to take this, I'm going to divide it by, let's say, so let's say I want it to change every 30 frames. So every if it's 30 frames per second, every second, I'm going to divide by 30. I'm then going to take this, round up or down or whatever, and connect this to the seed. So let's see, it's bumping, and then you can see the seed just changed every 30 seconds. Um, this may or may not be desirable for your project. Either way, uh, we have this thing bumping. So technically, it is an audio visualizer. It works. It's interesting. Um, and it's procedural in the sense that we can change the resolution of the things. Um, but it doesn't look visually interesting enough. Um, so I'm just going to add in one more layer of interest. And by the way, let me add in a bit of cavity and shadow so we can see what's going on. Um, I'm just going to add in a bit more visual interest, like the whole plane deforming, and then these points are moving up and down, uh, just to make this look a bit cooler. So, uh, how do we make this plane wavy? Is a, it's a good question. Well, first of all, everything we do over here uh, is fine. This is just like the particle or point instancing. That's going to be fine. I just want to distort the plane beforehand. Uh, well, the way I would recommend doing this is I'm going to separate attribute XYZ, and then I'm going to combine, and you'll see what I mean in a second. So what I'm doing is I want you to imagine, I guess we can just visualize it like this. Uh, I want you to imagine that we're just dealing with the plane without any of the cylinders or the audio bumping, whatever. 
just looking at the plane. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking this grid. I'm going to be taking the position of every single vertex, every single point, and I'm going to be separating them into X, Y, Z. So I'm just taking this um, vector attribute information and separating them into like one column vectors. So you can see here's the position, three dimensional thing, X, Y, Z. We've separated it. I'm going to take that and then basically do the reverse. So I'm now going to combine these again. And I know this is uh, confusing, but you know, that's geometry nodes. Welcome to the show. Um, so we've separated them and combined them, which is to say uh, we've done nothing. But it, it, what we do in between is what's going to make it look wavy. So how do, we, how do we do it? And this is something I've talked about in previous tutorials. Well, um, if we can somehow deform this X and Y channel, um, using trigonometry, sines, cosines, whatever, and map that to the height of the Z, uh, then we've essentially done it in this area in between. So here's what I recommend. Uh, we're going to do an attribute math. I'm going to look at, hmm, let's say, I guess we want to make temporary variables. So I'm just going to take this X, I'm going to add some number, and I'm going to paste this to a, a new attribute called X temp. So uh, this is the same thing as X, but you know, <laughs> uh, we, we wrote it off to a new one. Uh, we can also do the same with the uh, Y channel. So I'm taking Y and sending it to Y temp. Again, I'm making new attributes so that when we bring in X and Y, nothing is altered because I want their original positions. In other words, if I change this, nothing happens. If this was set to X instead, um, Whoops, if I set this to X instead, uh, it would be moving. So that's the issue. So that's why I'm using temporary variables or attributes. So we have our uh, temp, whoops, I keep typing it in the wrong field. We have our temp attributes. Uh, let's take our, God damn it. Uh, let's take our sines and cosines. So I'm gonna take the sine of X temp, which stands for temporary and write it back onto itself. I'm gonna do the same thing for the Y variable, boop, boop. And then uh, for the Z channel, I'm just going to add uh, those two together. So now these uh, sine and cosines versions. So X temp, Y temp maps to Z. And you can see uh, this is what gives us uh, the surface. So again, what is happening here is I'm making these temporary variables so nothing is altered. And um, we're taking sines, cosines, whatever. And since we add them, we now get this kind of three-dimensional, two-way uh, periodic surface. Okay. Uh, but the, the nice thing about this is if we now add, you know, something to either of these, it will look like the thing is animated. Because again, X temp is changing, but the X position is fixed. So the whole surface has to kind of stay in the same area relative to the top view, for example. Uh, so that means uh, we can now very quickly animate this. So let, let's just animate this quickly. Um, we could use the driver from before. I don't see why not. So this is just the uh, frame number driver that we made before. I'm going to take it, divide it by whatever speed. So if I wanted going, going uh, 10 times slower, I divide by 10, whatever, and just connect it to both of these. And you can now see it's an animated surface. We can make it even slower or whatever. Uh, but the point is we now have this animated surface, which is really just pulling these points up and down uh, so that when we instance the cylinders after, as we did before, uh, you can see now we have cylinders going on the surface and they're bumping uh, relative to that empty. Uh, one thing I want to do is I want to make this wave like way less intense. So remember the height of this, like basically what we're seeing is all being mapped to the Z channel, which is going into position. Um, so if we just do a bit of attribute math and I'm just going to multiply, uh, we're going to do a bunch of Z stuff by float. Um, this will control uh, the size of the wave. Since we're taking Z, writing it back onto itself, and I'm saying, oh, uh, let's make it only 22% as strong, or this is 100% as strong, but I'll make it 0.5. So this will make the wave less intense and the bumping is more like visual. And by the way, if you wanted to make the bumping like even more uh, ridiculous, uh, you could totally just take this vector that we're using. So again, the Z channel is what has this information. Uh, you can just take this uh, vector, do a bit of traditional vector math, and then just scale it by a bigger number so that when it does bump, <laughs> it gets much crazier, but I wouldn't recommend that. So uh, this is the general node network. If you wanted to now swap out the song, it literally is as easy as, you know, going back to this, going key, bake sound to F curves, and then picking a uh, different song. So in that sense, very procedural. You just swap out the song. Uh, you can pick different... Uh, numbers here to get different results and you know you render this nicely with an hdri nice shadows and everything and it would look uh, pretty decent so 
there you go. That is the uh, audio uh, visualizer. So hopefully you learned something in this tutorial. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I know we got a bit in the weeds there, but uh, I would recommend if you have not messed with geometry nodes, uh, go watch some of my previous geom geometry node tutorials. It goes over like all the basics you need to understand this. But uh, yeah, audio visualizer, it's done. Thank you again, uh, NordVPN, uh, for sponsoring.